Welcome to Gilbrook Farm. It's a new year and another exciting season here on uh, the channel for us, season seven. Today, in this episode, first episode of the year for 2022, we need to start on the railings and the post wraps for our wraparound porch here. Uh, if you're pr pretty new to the channel, um, we poured this last February, 2021. It's a seven inch slab on uh, metal deck pan. So it's basically a commercial grade parking deck that wraps the whole way around the house. And uh, now it's time to start dealing with the railings. Doing all the research we did, uh, trying to come up with the best solution for this, figuring out the post spacing. There are a lot of considerations we had to uh, to doing this. Uh, it's a big code thing, obviously. You have to have your railing meet code, and because this is a pretty high deck on that side, it's about 12 feet up off the ground, we gotta make sure it's super strong, it's sturdy, regardless of code. One of the considerations we had was uh, the really cool horizontal cable railing, which allows you to see uh, through it basically. Uh, it doesn't impede your view. Then we decided against that uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's sort of a modern look that isn't really what we're going for with, uh, with our overall aesthetic. But the main reason uh, we decided against going with horizontal rail or, or horizontal cable railing is it's a perfect ladder for little kids to climb up and go. And we don't want that. So we opted for a traditional look uh, with round balusters and we're gonna go with aluminum rail. I have to give a special thank you and shout out to AFCO Aluminum Columns and Rails, that's AFCO. They are sponsoring this episode and probably the next one. They were generous enough to work with us, partner with us on this build and they provided all of the handrails and columns and basically all this stuff that we're gonna put up here uh, to solve this railing issue. All the column wraps, all the railings, we're gonna do a couple cool things and show you some of the neat features that they offer. And uh, so if you're interested in figuring out what to do with your own deck or porch and you're interested in doing aluminum, uh, they have a lot of options and we'll show you uh, how we're gonna install all this in the next video or two. So as I said, we did a lot of research and a lot of planning in trying to figure out a strategy for this railing system for our front porch and our deck. What we went with was a combination of different products from AFCO. Uh, so the post wraps will be their Natchez, that's what they call the style, uh, column wrap. It's a four piece aluminum column wrap and that you put together and just basically build a box around this. Makes it nice and decorative and uh, hides the pressure treated wood. We're going to wrap this with uh, some foam that we have left from our cabinets when they ship the cabinets because we don't want aluminum to touch pressure treated uh, chemicals. Uh, I guess it creates a reaction that we don't want. So if you're gonna mount uh, railing posts onto a pressure treated deck, you'll want to use the pad that comes with it to separate the aluminum from the pressure treated. But for this, we're gonna wrap it, like I said. You can use a sill sealer that you can get in any building to supply house, uh, but like I said, we have some foam left over that we're gonna use. Textured bronze is our color. Uh, the reason for that is it matches the dark accents of the house, but even, even better, it's dark. So when you're looking out over the view, it kind of doesn't get in the way. So if it was white, it would sort of attract your eye uh, and sort of be a distraction from the view, but a darker color sort of allows you to kind of look through it without really noticing it as much. So got the first one up, went together pretty easy. I learned a couple trip tips and tricks that I'll show you on the next one here. So you put these four sides together called staves. Uh, you put the first three together and then kind of fit it around the post. And then you put the fourth side on and kind of bump it together with a rubber mallet. And then you put the base on. Now the base and the cap, the top, are the same. Uh, it's a little bit challenging to fit these together and get the miters to line up. And so down here, instead of screwing this into the post, I'm trying an experiment where I just JB welded the uh, two pieces that go together. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and see if this actually holds. And if it does, I'm not gonna worry about doing screws on the bases and I won't have any fasteners to deal with. 
Then I'll go along and I'll put a, a little bead of Lexel at the bottom there to keep water from getting in underneath. And uh, the directions also say you can put a bead of caulk in here to trim it out if you want. So I just started on this post, this corner over here. I'm going to try and do all the four corners first because they're the most challenging. And I got this wrapped with some foam just to keep the aluminum off the pressure treated. I guess uh, I read that the copper and the chemicals of the pressure treated stuff can react with the aluminum if it's touching. And we don't want that, so I just wrapped it because I have this foam. And then we'll, uh, I'm gonna measure this and cut it to length. And one thing I figured out, the last one is I'm gonna leave a little bit more room. I cut it to kind of within an eighth of an inch and it was a little bit of a challenge getting it to work because I've got so many different materials here coming together at this corner. Uh, I got the post, I've got the, the stucco on the outside, I've got that beam. And unless everything is 100% perfect, uh, you're going to need yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to cut it uh, probably a half inch short and let the base sit on the concrete. And then uh, at the top, because the caps are, I don't know, they're like probably six or eight inches tall, it'll uh, trim it out and uh, that'll be much easier. Pieces of extruded aluminum that is powder coated. And they snap together to make a box. So we're gonna cut some using my red leaded pencil. Works pretty good. Definitely need eye protection because this throws a lot of chips. We're gonna have a lot of little pieces left to make something cool out of. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to assemble three sides and make a three-sided box. Um, before we do, I figured out a little trick here. Uh, this channel that the other side locks into is a little bit difficult to press fit. So we just give it a little squirt of WD-40 and let it kind of run down that entire channel. Makes it a lot easier to put these together. All right, so before I lose all of my daylight for the day, I wanted to get this at least started. So I got this blocked here with a piece of half inch and a piece of three quarter. Brings it out an inch and a quarter because I'm gonna wrap, uh, tuck the wrap this way, like flush against there and flush against the face, leaving this much of a gap. And so I want this blocking here to attach my reeling to. The other good thing about wrapping the posts is they twisted when we installed them. They were probably still a little green and a little wet and not bad. One of them's bad, but I mean, this covers that. So you don't ever tell, you can't ever tell, but, uh, and there's enough room in here that even if it's freaking twisted really bad, uh, you can cover it as long as you get this squared up with the rest of the house. Pretty good. So my weird little experiment with JB Weld on the base worked really nice. No screws necessary. And it's, it's together. I mean, that's the seam where the two halves go together. Here's the other corner. I haven't done this one yet. Just have it kind of fitted together. So they look like this. So basically what I'm going to do is rough up this little edge here with a file to give me something to attach the, for, for the adhesive to bite to. Now I'm going to mix up some JB Weld, glue there and there to that side and uh, clamp it and let it sit for overnight. So I'm going to try and fit the cap around all of this business now.
It was a little more difficult than I anticipated, but it's on there. So while I'm doing the columns, Jamie is working on exterior stain of these fiberglass doors. It's gonna need two coats, but man, that's really starting to look cool. It's gonna set off these rocks good. This is walnut gel stain. That's what the doors are gonna look like. I'm gonna do those ones. That's a lot of doors, but I think that's gonna look great. So putting on these capitals is a little bit of a challenge, these tops. The bases are easy. I'm gonna do all those at once. So what I'm doing, like, you know, you got two halves here that are mitered and that's the challenge is getting these miters to line up, especially when everything is not perfect. So I'm drilling holes, countersinking. This is my last cap or capital. On, the, on this side of the porch, at least. The best one so far. Seal the bottom of these posts with some Lexel here. This stuff sticks to just about anything. Does a good job. Don't have to be super precise because this is getting covered with the base but I don't want any water getting in here. And then like getting trapped in like mold or any of that business. Mix up some JB Weld. This is where I weld it, this little spline right here. And that's all it seems to need, so I'm just gonna take off this paint with this file. Okay, I'm gonna do that on both of them so we can get a good bond. Squirt out a big fat worm. Equal amount of the hardener. Stir it together. All right, I put the goop on. Put that on there. Put that on there. Mash these corners. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put these here just to, in case the wind blows funny. Help keep it squared up. And I'll let that dry overnight and we should be good. Well, it's the next day and the JB Weld seems to have worked on the base pieces. Everything turned out nice. Uh, Really happy with this. I like the way it matches the window trim and uh, hoping that the railing is uh, relatively simple to put in. I'm going to start working on the back porch, do those columns, and then we'll figure out the railing. post so I'm gonna put blocking in here these are five and a half inches wide and our openings of our post wraps are seven inches uh, we're gonna go flush to this side and flush to the front pulling it this way so we won't need to block this side because it'll be going right through aluminums directly into the post we we'll need to block this side an inch and a half here and here for the top and bottom rail. And then on all the other mid posts, we just need to block three quarter on each side because they'll be spaced uh, with an equal amount of space on each side and pulled flush to the front. 
so that's what I'm doing. All right, everything's wrapped and blocked. So we got the blocking on this side, blocking on each side. Now this post, remember when I said the posts twisted? This is the worst one and it twisted pretty bad. So it's nice and clean up there, but it twisted counterclockwise and look how much it moved just from going from the humidity that we had and then as it dried, it just twisted like really bad. I didn't really want to figure out how to pull this post and replace it. So I'm hoping that the space between the wrap and the post is enough that I can fudge it. Uh, so that's why I didn't put blocking on the bottom there. I'm gonna do that when I get to that post and try and fit it around that. But if it works, then it'll make that post look perfect. And that's one way you can deal with that. And then on this side, <clears throat> I don't have any on the inside here because I'm hoping to be able to pull a rail right up to that post. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna be able to, because it's close. Wow, cool. There we go. Perfect. are the basics for installing the eight inch Natchez style aluminum column wrap from AFCO Industries. Everything went together pretty well. Um, no major issues and uh, learned a couple tips and tricks along the way. So if you have any questions, if there's anything I may have missed in terms of how to do all this, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get to those as soon as I can. And uh, the next video we'll be working on the railing. So tomorrow's New Year's Eve, gonna take a day off and we'll see you when we do the railings. Thanks for watching.